Groovy. Hey gang. Today's video will be something a little different. The subject matter is my one and a half year old Labrador Retriever named Hercules. Specifically, Hercules with a GoPro fetch on. The fetch is a camera harness that GoPro released sometime last year. The basic idea is a supposedly comfortable and completely adjustable harness that you put on your dog. To it, you can then mount a GoPro camera in two places. The dog's back or his chest. Exercise for the viewer is to look the GoPro fetch up on the web and check out the details. I'm not going to include them here. This is all well and good in theory. But the executive summary of this thing, it's an unmitigated piece of trash. Fortunately, I didn't spend a lot of money on it. Otherwise, I'd be pretty pissed off. Our first test with the fetch was a waste of time. I tried mounting the camera to Herc's chest. My GoPro is the Hero 3, and it, along with the case it sits in, is a bit too wide for Herc's chest. Inevitably, his front legs would smash into it as he was running to fetch the ball. And ultimately, the camera would be pivoted to look at his chin or down at the ground. I'll touch upon that weakness in a moment. The second test was on Herc's back. This was met with slightly more success, but only somewhat. The fetch's main weakness is that the straps can't and won't hold the harness on the dog completely straight and upright, assuming the dog is very active. If your dog is just walking along, the harness will likely stay put. But if he starts running at full tilt, there's no way the camera will stay up. Inevitably, the straps will loosen because they have no way to be secured once they're tightened. GoPro provides these ridiculous, stretchable loops that the straps are supposed to slide through and, via friction, stay put. Again, if your dog is just walking along, they probably will. But as soon as he starts galloping or breathing heavy, the straps will lose purchase around the dog's chest and loosen themselves. Dogs also don't run completely straight at full tilt. If you watch a dog or any other four-legged mammal run, you'll note that one side generally hits the ground before the other. When that happens, their body torques ever so slightly. This, combined with the straps loosening, makes certain that the camera is going to end up on the dog's side, not his back. Further aggravating this whole experiment is the fact that the standard GoPro pivot mount isn't built to deal with a bunch of sudden G-force shocks applied to it. Yes, you can attach a GoPro to a car's windshield and it'll stay put. You can do the same to your helmet, your bike, or whatever. But put it on a dog that's constantly bouncing on and off the ground as it's running, and you'll soon find the pivot mount can't hold. Like when the camera was mounted on Herc's chest, I'd find the camera on his back either pointed down at his back or up at the sky. No amount of tightening the thumb screw mattered. My Hero 3 camera and its case weigh in at about 130 grams. The new GoPro Session checks in at about 90 grams and is only 1.5 inches cubed. It's a little smaller and a little lighter. My last experiment with the fetch was with the new Session. I combined that with using the little piece of plastic that GoPro locks the camera down in its retail case it ends up preventing the camera from pivoting on the pivot mount. This was far more successful than with the Hero 3. The harness only let the camera droop a little toward Herc's side. I countered that by twisting it ever so slightly to the opposite side, and as he ran, it straightened up. I'd say that with the session, the fetch is a barely acceptable product. I still think it's a piece of garbage, but I'll keep playing around with it. GoPro could go a long way to improve this thing by adding metal clasps to the end of the adjustable straps, so that as you tighten them through the buckle, you can lock them against themselves. In order to make that comfortable for the dog, however, they'll need to wrap these clasps in something soft yet waterproof. I don't expect them to try and improve this thing, however, as they seem to believe it's a great way to document your dog having fun. Wishful thinking. As I stated earlier, I'd avoid this product. 
I don't know if anyone makes something better, but this one clearly isn't ready for active dogs.